ball right in front of the Bayport bench. Do you the best? Yeah, we take it over! Got the Dabosky, reverse lamp, close, straight point. We can supply you. Gregory is out there going on. Back to back triple. Whoa, hard step. Got the hard step to jump up. Because we take it over. Lapeer has won the Division One State Championship. Good evening and welcome to Sheboygan South High School for tonight's WIAA sectional semifinal game between the DePue Redbirds and Homestead Highlanders alongside studio engineer Paul Rupin, color analyst and former DePue All-American Cale Coleman. My name is Mark Mino and I'm excited to bring you this evening's game from the Gallagher's Pizza broadcast booth high atop in the Sheboygan South broadcast booth. Number one overall sectional seed DePue Redbirds have gone 2-0 in the six-game postseason with wins over Green Bay Parable 85-39 and Fond du Lac 70-54 this past weekend to set the stage tonight with Homestead. Bringing in a 25-1 record, the Birds received big-time contributions in the Saturday victory over Fond du Lac from 6-3 junior Zach Kinzinger with 26 and 6-8 senior Will Hornseth who added 21 for Coach Brian Winchester who's in his 17th season with the Pier with an overall record of 330 and 97, has had Homestead's number the past couple of years as they've taken four in a row from the Highlanders, including the 73-58 win this season in the WY, WBY shootout over the holiday break. DePierre has been led by first-team all-conference and all-defensive team selections. Zach Kinzinger, who averages 19.4 per game. Will Hornseth comes in as the reigning player of the year and defensive player of the year in the conference, averaging 16.7. And Price Gregory is 6'6", junior, adding 11.1. Second team all-conference guard, Rowan Domofsky, a 6-foot junior, is also on the def all-defensive team, has averaged 7.7. And honorable mention all-conference pick, Ben Williams, a 6'7", senior, has averaged 6 points per game. For coach Sean Freider and the Homestead Highlanders, they currently sit at 20-6 and six overall and finish the season in second place in the North Shore Conference with a 16-2 and two record. The Highlanders are led by St. Thomas recruit 6'5", senior, Tim Franks, who averages 27.8 per game, and Trevor Polite, a 6'6 junior, who averages 13.2 and 6 rebounds per game. The Highlanders knocked off Manitowoc in a regional semifinal 86-53 before beating Sussex Hamilton 61-59 to claim the regional championship last Saturday. So, Cale, we'll get to the starting lineups here in a, in a second, but when you think about DePierre, right, they get that 1-2 scoring combo with Zach and Will, what else do you think they need tonight to help them win this game, but then also help them, you know, a longer run in the postseason? Well, I, I look at directly at junior guard number 33, Price Gregory. If he can get going, his size, his length, his athleticism, and his ability to shoot the basketball, uh, we know what Hornseth, we know what Kinsinger provide, but if you get Gregory going, if you're this the pure team, things could really get dangerous for, for the team in white here tonight. Yeah, and on, you know, from Homestead's perspective, right, they got a couple of kids that they need to guard, you know, certainly one with Homestead and also, uh, and actually we're going to, I'm going to take a break here as we are going right to the National Anthem, so we'll be back with a little commentary and also the starting lineups.
So, Cale, before we went to the National Anthem, talk just for a second here about Homestead with their big two with Franks averaging about 27 and a half and Polite, the 6'6 junior, averaging a little over 13. From De Pierre's perspective defensively, what do you think they need to do to kind of limit their possessions? Because we know that Homestead likes to shoot the three. Um, what do you think we, they need to do to basically kind of keep them in check and, and hope, hope for a De Pierre win there? Well, I think the key for Homestead is they need to play at their pace. So if you're the Redbirds, you want to slow them down. Why don't you think about this? Homestead shoots 44% of their field goals from three-point range. They average about 10 more shots per game than this Redbird team. So Homestead, they want to get up and down the floor. They want to play fast. If De Pere, defensively, they want to slow the game down. They want to run good offense. And I think that will be moving the ball and getting stops, getting rebounds is going to be key for the Redbirds because Homestead's going to get, they're going to get sick of playing defense. They're not used to playing defense, right? right. They're used to getting that ball out of the rim and going down on the other side of the floor mm -hmm. and, and trying to score quick buckets. So it, it's really, in my opinion, a if Homestead can play at their tempo tonight and continue to crash the offensive boards, which three is long rebounds, good for offensive rebounding, and the Redbirds don't do a good job of boxing out, they're going to be in for a struggle. If, if, if De Pere's able to control the tempo, it's really going to be a challenge for Homestead to continue to play at that slower pace. Yep, yep. Real quick here, officials for tonight's contest are Kenneth Syracuse, Austin Edge, and Matthew Fluger. Again, rundown of the starters here. First for Homestead, number five, Tim Franks, 6'5", senior, number 10, Trevor Polite, a 6'6", junior, number 15, Andrew Hintersocker, a 5'7", senior, number one, Tommy O'Hagan, a 6'2", junior, number two, Isaiah Wright, a 6'0", senior. For the Birds, number 33, Price Gregory, a 6'6", junior, number two, Zach Kinzinger, a 6'3", junior, Number 13, Will Hornseth, a 6'8", senior. Ben Willinghans wears number 32, a 6'7", senior. And number two, Rowan Domofsky, a 6'7", junior. We are all set here from Isn't South. is great in yeah. March? And look at, you just look out there. There's some good-looking kids. And this is where the teams just get better and better. It's high-level basketball. This is going to be a fun one tonight, yeah. Mark. Pack gym for sure. The birds will get an opportunity to scratch here first as Zach sets up shot between the wheels. As Homestead comes out in a little zone action here. And it'll be interesting to watch mm -hmm. Polite there in the middle, number 10. Uh, how he moves back and forth. That is the start we were looking for from Price as he knocks down his first triple in the corner. Three zip to Pierce, 17 30 to play. Well, and that, that's the key to the game for the Redbirds, right? You, if Gregory gets going, it could be a long night. Yep, we were talking about that. You get that contribution from him, and man, that is another weapon you have to worry about. Well, beautiful setup here at Sheboygan South to host the game. Uh, and, and like you said, Mark, great crowd. Kind of a neutral site right in between the yep. two schools. Yep. Looks a little more De Pierre-ish tonight. This, the bleachers that are right in front of our vantage point looks pretty much full of all the pure, uh, the pure adults. A little sparser on the Homestead side. As O'Hagan goes up for a little mid-range jump shot and that ball gets tipped out of bounds. Highlanders are going to keep it underneath their own basket. And the Pierre's not going to be able to just out jump mm -hmm. the, the teams. they got to get, get a better body, get, get a box out, be able to secure that rebound because that, that's what Homestead does really well. They get a lot of offensive rebounds. Frank's little pull-up, he knocks that one down from 17 on the wing. 3-2 birds. Yeah, it's almost like a 2-1-2 zone here where uh, Polite will extend out to the top of the key if the ball's centered up. Yeah, and they're kind of taking away that middle flash as well. Zach, little pull up from 18. That one rolls around and in for his first bucket. 5-2 to Pierre, closing on 16 minutes to play here first half. Yeah, different look for De Pierre certainly with that, that zone. Pretty active, running from corner to corner, and again, maybe taking away some of those traditional passing angles that, they, that you see in a normal, maybe a 2-3 or a 1-3-1. Switch of the ball screen here, putting willing hands on Polite. And we get some length from the Pierce knocking that pass out of bounds. 
And there's that deflection by Gregory, 6'6 junior. Long, athletic kid. Well, Cale, you mentioned on an earlier broadcast, which is the length that the pier has when you're playing on a high school floor. It just really makes those passing angles and gaps a lot smaller because of the length that you have. Man, oh. it. An offensive foul on Trevor Polite. Looks like maybe he hooked Will as he was turning the corner. Good news for the Piers. That's Polite's first foul and the team's first. Well, what a luxury if you're the Redbirds. You pull your center out and have him <laughs> guarding basically the point guard for the Highlanders. And we were talking about that on the ride down, right? How Will can just kind of guard anyone and keep kids in front of him. Yeah, his feet are really soft. Nice dump off. Will to Ben, who slices in, gets his first bucket, 7-2 to Pierre. Will a little cautious on that entry as a Highlander was right there, knocked him down, but no call. Franks, long triple top, back rim, no good. Good box out by Zach, but that ball is back to by O'Hagan. And Holmstead will reset here in the half court. From our vantage point where you are watching, Redbirds are moving right to left. As yeah. Frank gets loose down the lane, he's going to draw a fall. That was a nice move. Mm -hmm. I believe Rowan's going to pick up his first. Looked like he was yeah. going to be able to finish through the contact. Just couldn't yeah. get it to roll over the front of the rim. But that is an effective offense for the Homestead star, Franks. Yep, he was 87% from the line. So usually a pretty good outcome when he throws a strike. And he is good on both. He's got all four of Homestead's points here so far. And Kinziger on Franks, mm -hmm. so, it, it, so it'll be interesting to see how they continue to defend that because that time they, they switched the ball screen. A patient offense here yeah. from the Redbirds. Zach, long triple left side. Got it. Nothing but the bottom of the net for the 6'3 junior as he gets his fifth point. Birds 10-4, 14 to play here first half. Yeah, I don't know if I love the idea of the zone if you're Homestead for, for reasons like that. Gets late in the possession. The pure good movement on the ball. Yep. Gets an open three for a, a fantastic shooter, right? Yeah, exactly. And we all know what's coming off the bench, too, if Hutchins gets a couple of those looks and gets some confidence. Gregory, triple. Back rim, no good. Will tracks down that one, and the Birds will be set here in the half court. Here the Redbirds look to get a baseline Ooh. cutter going, but there's Kinziger. <laughs> Triple right in front of the Highlanders bench. We got a timeout on the floor by Homestead as the Birds have raced out to a nine-point lead, 13-4. And we got the replay of that first triple by Zach in the corner. And we're going to keep it right here as it's a 30-second timeout. So certainly Kale could not have scripted this one any better as the birds jump out to a nine-point lead as they've started to open that thing up with a couple of deep perimeter shots, a couple by Zach and one by Price. Yeah, and, and we'll see what Homestead does. If they're going to they're stay in that zone. they got to rebound out of it, right? The zones are really difficult to rebound. But you give up that second-chance opportunity, and it's such a momentum killer when you've gone through a long defensive possession and then all of a sudden you're, you, you turn around and you're still on defense. Yep. Yep. And the other thing, right, you, you've got those perimeter shooters fanned out. Longer closeouts, that's going to open up a little more action. They may get some high low to Ben and Will um, or skip pass and then dump down. So we'll see how this how this plays out and maybe what Coach Kreider talked about during that timeout. Maybe they'll change things up defensively. Yeah, and they've got Polite off the ball. Probably coming out in a set here if you're Homestead. Good defense by Will as he goes straight on Polite's opportunity. Rowan battles and grabs that rebound. Birds will push here. 
that kind of goes to your comment earlier of the length and how it's it's very difficult to simulate that in practice. Mm -hmm. But they're running offense 30 feet from the basket, right. and they kind of finally get the ball in, but it's off balance. It's on the left side. Yep. Weird release angle for Polite. And then DePierre just does such a great job of rebounding it because they're they're on the back side, and they've got 6'6", 6'5", 6'6", on the other side. Yep. And even when they challenge that shot, everybody's going straight up. They're not reaching. They're just making them shoot over the top of them. Hutchins and Wicker are going to check into the game for the Redbirds. As Domofsky oh, yep, and Willingans yes. check out. As Hinterstocker comes up a little short on that, as we mentioned with Connor Hutchins, Zach's going to settle in a long triple. That one front rim no good. As Hinterstocker comes away with it. He's going to push up to Hohegan. Heat check there from Kinzinger. This is more of the homestead pace that they'd prefer to play at. Wicker late in rotation there. You yep. know, draw the foul. He's right with the blow by on the baseline, and he's going to get a couple opportunities here. Isaiah Wright, the senior, heads to the line. The reverse Grinch Kobe's. <laughs> I'm glad I have the fashion expert next to me, man, because all I can see is pink. Those are Nikes, I'm assuming? They are. Okay, there we go. And if you disclose, Kayla, you only have three pair of tennies. Is that accurate? Or <laughs> maybe you've got a separate closet for, for all of them. Yeah, it might, be a, it might be an issue. <laughs> Thirteen five to Piers. We've just passed twelve minutes in the first half. Connor, no good on that little pull up sixteen footer. As Blake comes over with that rebound, quick pull up Hinterstocker. Jack yep. nails that three right in front of the Redbird bench. Thirteen eight to Pier. And the Redbirds got to get back and locate in transition. That's Homestead basketball right there. Yep. Again, I think we said they average just under 33 point attempts per game, so they are not afraid to get that thing up on the rim. And that's all it takes. You know, you can tell the Redbirds are a little shaken right now, right? You get a deflection, you get a rebound, stop, score quick, and, and all of a sudden it's not as comfortable running offense here for the team in white. Zach, nice maneuver down low, dump off to Will as Will's got his first bucket on a nice feed by Zach. Fifteen eight to Pier, eleven to play here first half. Here's a great example of Will going out and guarding a five seven player. A little turnaround by Rogers back rim no good as Zach's even come down with that one. Zach triple key splash. Woo! Zach is cooking right now as he's got eleven. Birds with a double digit lead, ten thirty to play. Ooh. Ooh. Nice blow by by Hinterstocker. Good recovery by Gregory. Yeah, Hinterstocker, I think he thought he, he, he was in the clear, and Gregory, that's those long arms. Yep. I mean, it just came from no, out of nowhere. It gets a deflection. Hutchins with a good look back rim on that. No good as O'Hagan pulls down the rebound. That ball is sent out. I believe Gregory got a piece of that one as Polite was trying to finish, and he gets that one blocked. Yeah, Rogers, the freshman with good penetration, and just couldn't get the dump off. The fade and flip. Will goes up. Offensive rebound with the stick back. 20-8 to eight to Pierre. Will's up to four as he exerted his force on the offensive end. White looked over at <laughs> Coach Kreider and gave him a, a little shrug. Like, what do you do? <laughs> Oh, nice Great take. finish. Yep. O'Hagan over the top of Will. Going to the floor as O'Hagan gets his first bucket. 20 to 10 to Pier, 9.30 to play in the first half. Zach triple corner. He is just on fire. Nails that one right in front of the Homestead student section. He's up to 14. Yeah, unofficial stats. I've got him four for five from three. And there you go. They add up quick for him. 
Frank showing some range as he goes up long. Long rebound comes out to play, and they're going to keep it here on the offensive end. Skip pass, Hinterstocker, triple. Front rim no good. Good box out. As Zach tracks that one down. Yeah, O'Hagan with a good more. One pass, found the open shooter, just couldn't get it to fall. Redbird's content to pull it out as Homestead sets back up in that 2-1-2 zone. As you mentioned, Bird's just super content looking for that as Wick gets loose inside. A little up and under. Oh, he's going to draw a foul. Colin Wicker very patient with a couple of spins and a little shot fake, and he's going to get rewarded and head to the line. Yeah, it looked like Homestead had it under control, too, and just a late foul on the arm of the shooter sends Wicker to the line. As Dorchester and Willingans are set to check in for the Birds, and Bleisner's going to get ready to... we got Bleisner and Jonah Wensler. We're going to step in for Homestead. O'Hagan and Polite head to the bench for Homestead, as do Hornseth and Hutchins yep. for the Redbirds. We've got 45 pieces of paper up here, uh, Kale, so I just need to stay organized. Uh, thanks for filling in on uh, <laughs> who's coming in, who's coming out. you got no shortage of, oh of information up here. That's going to yep. be a travel. Yep. Bleisner picked up his pivot. Again, when you think, hey, man, we got Will out of the game, you just bring Ben back in, and you've got you know, Gregory at 6'6", six, six, even at the guard, guard spot. Zach and Rowan are a little bit bigger than the guys that they're playing against. It's, it's just, like I said, I keep saying it, but it's tough to simulate that mm -hmm. type of length in practice. Yeah. Until you get out there, you really can't appreciate it. This homestead has gone back to man. Ben loses the handle on that one, trying to get around the corner. Good defense there by yep. Wensler. Now we're going to get a reach yep. on Dorchester as he mm -hmm. grabbed two hands right to the body. Yep. Asking, it's an easy call for the official. Yep. That is Dorchester's first, team third. But that's been the best action so far from Homestead is getting Franks to the basket. They need to keep finding ways to get him in action. They've had some success with the dribble handoff and, and, and a couple times with the ball screen. But he, you really got to find a way to get Franks, the ball in Franks' hand on every possession, in yep. my opinion, if you're Homestead. Yep. Because right now, everything that good that's happened has pretty much come through him. Kind of what we talk about with Will, right? Get everything, you know, kind of run everything through him. Obviously, Zach with the with the torrid start that he's off to, but you know, making sure Will touches it at some point during the possession. Well, it collapses the defense, and mm -hmm. when you've got shooters around, all of a sudden you get an extra body in help, and somebody's open. Right, and that's really helped Kinsinger get a couple open shots early in the game here tonight. As polite checks back in, the Highlanders are going with a man defense right now. Zach, triple corner. Got it. Woof. He's yeah. up to 17, same spot as before. Yeah, he's feeling it. <laughs> That's tough. I, yeah. I don't know what you do with that. <laughs> he was going to shoot it pretty much either way, and, and he knocked it down. He had a defender right on him, but you just get into one of those rhythms. As you mentioned, right, Frank seems to get it. He's got to finish that. Yeah, that's a good look for him. Yep. As Ben comes over and cleans it up. Oh, nifty little up and under. Zach could not get it to go as Franks comes over with the rebound. Polite triple right in front of the pure bench. That one back rim no good. Franks has got it off the window and in. Yeah, we call that the hero spot, right? That backside block, and yep. Domovsky was late in rotation getting to that backside, but the ball just comes off right to there, and... A great play by Franks. That's a high basketball IQ play, right? I mean, he just yes. he sees the shot go up. He runs right to that hero spot. O'Hagan and Wright heading to the scores table for Homestead. As our Hornseth 
Wicks. We're going to run out by Rogers after the block. We're going to have a timeout by DePier. And it looks like a 30 second timeout. Leads at 13. Yeah, so a little bit of momentum here for Homestead after that after that tip shot. And Coach Winchester just trying to get the guys settled down here a little bit. And I, I like it. it. I've always been a fan of, of using your timeouts. You oh, got to sure. kill, kill some of that momentum. And um, I think for both teams, that doesn't do you any good to have two timeouts left uh, in a 20-point win or loss, right? Exactly. So um, use them now while you try and figure some things out. You bet. Got a chance to make some adjustments. And Homestead is going to stay in that man-to-man. -man. Hutchins comes in for Kinzinger. He's going to get a little blow here. Wick, three, top, front rim, no good. Franks comes away with that one. And that's a good look. That's yep. the collapse we talked about. You draw the extra defender, and Will's a good passer. He makes that kick out, just couldn't get it to go. And Polite had a couple of options, and unfortunately he threw it between both of them, and that ball rolls out of bounds, turnover Highlanders. I don't know if you saw the, the hands down there by Paul Vanderkellen on the scores table. We're incredible Just coming up with that ball. Velcro-like. He's working. He's been the, um, the scorebook engineer for the pure basketball for a long time. I don't even want to put a... 20-plus years? 20-plus years, yeah. Retired dentist who loves to hang around the gym in the wintertime. That's going to be a travel. For a step. Yep. Yeah, probably had a little body on that one. Yeah, but I don't think that was yeah. a, that, that was, in, in a game like this, that yeah. was nothing malicious. I, I'd rather the officials let them play yep. and you got to absorb that contact. And, sure. You know, it was a good finish. It just took an extra step. Yep. As Williams and Wicker are going to come out and Kinzinger and Gregory back in. Triple by O'Hagan. Back rim no good. Ooh, no box out on the weak side. As Bleiser gets stripped, a little scramble for the ball ends up in Frank's hands. He knocks yep. down the triple from the top of the key on the scramble. Hand down, man down. Rowan's got to get a hand up on that closeout. My... My old college coach used to say he's using his head as a sight. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's a good shot for a good shooter there. Hutchins triple. Got it. it. One for two for Connor. As you mentioned, about 60% shooter from threes, and that might be a good thing to get him started. Yeah, and that was kind of the same thing. Uh, Frank's with a little bit of a lazy close out there. Doesn't get his hand up, and Hutchins shoots it at 60%. Yeah, Good time, chance that's going in. Yeah, that time Polite got Will off the ground as he finished with a point-blank shot. That's his first bucket of the game. Right. Birds by 11, just under four to play here in the first half. Ooh. He had, he had Will mid-post. Bleisner with the big body down low trying to work against Hornseth. Now, we go straight up. We're going to have a jump ball here as Will ties up couple of Highlanders, and that ball's going to go over to Homestead. They run that action at quite a bit, Kale, right, where Will comes up and they, you know, he tries to set that screen and maybe do the direct handoff, and then Will break around the corner, usually going in for a layup or a dunk, but that time they had that covered up pretty well. Yeah. Michael Rogers Jr. going to check back in, the freshman handling the ball here for the Highlanders. Good switch and good help by Gregory on Franks. A little extra contact there, maybe. Gets away with one. Ooh, nice little up and under. No good as Rogers comes away with that one. Franks, little spin, goes in, gets that one rejected by Hornseth, and he wins the rest of the match with the rebound. We got Kinziger on the push right side. Coach Kreider not overly thrilled with that call for non call as Will misses a little runner off the window. A little up and down action. Frank's triple right in front of the Redbird bench. No good. Demosky with the rebound. 
Yeah. Quick release from Franks. Just couldn't get that one to go. Ah. Hutchins threw that one away as Polite got his mitts on that one. Trail three as Rogers misses it. Polite with the rebound goes up glass. Nice good. move. That's a tough, tough one to guard if you're yep. Horn set. 30 to 21 Redbirds right at two minutes to play here first half. Homestead credit here. They're able to cut it back to single digits. Seem to have had a little more, a little more success going man. Will hasn't really gotten loose on the inside. That ball's going to get kicked out of bounds by Polite. Yeah, the, it's, Homestead's just a little more active in the man-to-man, -man, right? That, not, that they, not that they weren't in the zone, but the Pierce zone attack was, was really well prepared, I think, in the event that they came out in something like that. And, yeah. Um, and give right. Coach Kreider credit for some, some good adjustments yep. here in the first half. Gregory triple off the inbound. That one rattles in and out. As Wright, who just checked into the game, grabs the rebound. Also, Ben Williams checks in for the Redbirds. Always unofficial stats here from me, but I don't know if the Redbirds have scored in the last four minutes. You might be right. As O'Hagan gets that one swat out of bounds by Ben. He got some good looks, but just nothing to go down. A couple subs here for Homestead. Interstocker and Rogers check in for Bleisner and Wright. Nice little set off of the inbound was defended well by the pier. This plate's going to call out a set here right on top of the Sheboygan South or on the bottom of the Sheboygan South logo. And the pier ended up to switch on Franks, which is I think they're trying to exploit, and it's going to be a moving no, hold on the screen. Not a moving screen. Oh, did they get, okay. As O'Hagan's going to pick up his second. As Wright, Wensler, and Bleisner check in, as Franks is going to get... His first rest here with 49 seconds to play. I don't hate it, right? No. Get get it. Get a quick breather. Make sure you don't pick up a a, a foul here uh, late in the first half. Rowan lines up a triple. That one rim unkind. Ball rattles out as Polite comes away with it. Still not able to get one to fall. Or Ooh, the Red long triple by Polite right in front of the Redbird bench. He's up to seven, knocking that lead down to six, 30 to 24. It's a pure little life here by the Highlanders as they close that gap. And that's such great action. Throw it up to the corner, trail it yourself. It's a room and rhythm shot for a good shooter. Yeah. Trying to get Ben for a double dribble. Thought he just kind of lost it, but oh well. As Franks, Rogers, and Interstocker check back in. Hmm. I didn't, I don't know, I didn't see it, but I, I didn't have the greatest angle. Nope. It looked like he, maybe he carried it or got his hand under the ball, but I didn't see the right hand go to it. Maybe it did. A little diamond set for the Highlanders. That shot is away at the And good. Yeah, and good. As Rogers nails a half quarter, we go to halftime here, 30 to 27. Birds had a 17 point lead. That thing has been trimmed to three. As the birds go in with a halftime lead of 30 to 27, we'll be back here in a couple of minutes with scores from both teams. And right after we hear from Gallagher's Pizza, our YouTube streaming sponsor.
And welcome back to Sheboygan South High School for the sectional semifinal. And we are at halftime between the Homestead Highlanders and the Pure Redbirds. The Birds with a three-point lead, 30-27, to 27, alongside studio engineer Paul Roop and Cale Coleman. My name is Mark Mino. Cale, we talked a little bit, right, about uh, Highlander, right? No, nothing, nothing to lose for them. Um, they were down, you know, similar spot last time we played them, 34-26. Birds found a way to pull away in the second half, but... Um, Highlanders, they're on a, what, seven, I think we said a 17-3 to three run to end the first half. So, you know, from your chair, what do you think the birds need to do to kind of settle things down and get back on that positive pace here in the second half? Well, I would be shocked if DePierre doesn't come out to start the second half and get a touch to Hornseth and try and get him something down low, maybe an and one. Just get get him back into the rhythm of the game. And that's part of the, it, it's 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 a gift and a curse, right? When Kinsgar comes out and he nails shots early, nobody else is kind of involved. All of a sudden, DePierre had great looks in the first half, but they got guys that haven't taken a shot in 20 minutes. Yeah. And so, you know, you do things like fumble the ball, turn it over, just long, short. And, uh, and DePierre didn't get second chance opportunities. Credit Homestead, they got bodies, uh, on, on the peer players, got box outs, and then got into their game, got into transition, got some easy buckets. They've got nothing to lose. Like, yeah. they're here having fun, and the longer they stay in this, the more they, they've got a chance to, to knock off the reigning state champs, right? I mean, yep. there aren't many people that came into this game and said, you know, I'm picking Homestead to win. So <laughs> this is, you know, this is great if, yeah. you're, if you're a Homestead running into the locker room, having just hit that court shot, half court shot, You've got all the momentum, yep. and now you're right back in this thing. Yep. Down 17 to battle back. I mean, that's yeah. really, really impressive. Yeah. Scores here from the first half for Homestead. Tommy O'Hagan with two. Isaiah Wright with one. Michael Rogers with five. Franks with nine. Trevor Plight with seven. And Hinterstocker, Andrew Hinterstocker with three. For the Redbirds, Zach with 17. Connor Hutchins with three. Will Hornstead with four. Colin Wicker with a free throw. Ben Willingans with two. And Price Gregory with three as we are back to action here to start the second half. The birds will take it from our right to our left, first possession. A little dribble handoff from Will. Pretty easy stuff there, a little handoff to Rowan as he goes glass. Yeah, great quick hitter there by the Redbirds. Come out and steal one early. But, but it, you know, for, for Homestead here, right, they've got Bleisner back in the, in the game starting the second half. Oh. He did not start the game, correct, Mark? Correct. And, and, and really, I mean, he was the one that kind of came in and started bodying Hornseth yeah. and getting him off off balance and, and kind of taking Will out of his game, right? Yep. I mean, he's a finesse player, and now he's banging with the, the big body of the, the junior from Homestead. Yep. Frank's kind of bullied his way into Rowan, got him to commit his second fouls. He's going to have the line for a couple. As Hinterstocker checks in for the Highlanders. I like Frank's game. I mean, just watch his shot, right? He's got he's got a nice high release, good follow through, and that's like <laughs> that's what you want to see yeah. if you're a, if you're a, a young player. I mean, that's a shot you want to emulate. Yep, get in the gym and look like that exactly. Nice patient possession here mm -hmm. by the Redbirds. High ball screen by Will. Each team averages about 75 a game, so a little bit under that pace. And the Highlanders, you know, like I said, they get they average 10 more shots a game than the Redbirds. They shoot it at 50% on the season. The Redbirds shoot it at 53%, or, I'm sorry, 58% on the season. I mean, there's just the, the Redbirds, yeah. are, from an efficiency standpoint, mm -hmm. are, are really, really good. But it, part of the reason is because they play, and they'll, they'll wait for a great show. Yep. Franks here on Hornseth. Oh, nice wiggle by Will as he's going to get Franks to commit the fall. Will just kind of working was patiently it? right getting to his spot. I think it was oh, Hinterstocker oh. coming over late, got him on the, okay. got him on the 
trip. A little bit. His foot coming in, trying to go for the steal. Got him going up. That'll send Hornsef to the line. As Will's going to have the line, he shoots it at a 76% clip. Splits the free throws, birds by four, just under 16 to play here in the ball game. Now, just a little bit longer there as Franks got loose on the baseline, went up over Zach, and Franks has got 13. Two point game, 33 31 to Pierre. Oh, and Zach's in a relatively good, posi good pos uh, position. He's like a quarter step late, which yep. just gives Frank enough to get the baseline, and then he uses his body so well that there's really no chance to recover if you're Kinzinger. Zach Long, triple back rim, no good. As Gregory tips that one out of bounds, ball's going to go over to Homestead. Yeah, I actually thought the official could have got Gregory with yeah. it over the back there. That was a great box out mm -hmm. by Homestead. Highlanders with the ball, now with a chance to either tie or take the lead with a triple. I like to see the Redbirds come down. You know, They, they started that, the game off with a set. And then kind of went back into it. I'd love to see them get into one of their set actions and just get another easy bucket, mm -hmm. get the ball to Hornseth on the inside. Little runner by Wright goes with the right hand, and he has got three, and we're all square at 33. 15 to play here in the ball game. Zach settles into a little 17-footer baseline. That one rolls off, and right, excuse me, Franks is going to pull on a rebound quickly front court. And, and I tell you what, they, the Redbirds look a little nervous. They're a little tentative on offense. Right As now. Hinter knocks down a triple right in front of the Highlanders bench, and the Highlanders have a lead here, 36-33. As Hinterstocker is up to six, and we've got a timeout fight up here. That'll bring the Homestead crowd to their feet. Yep. This is a good timeout, though. I was thinking you probably need it either way, whether they score sure. or not. Just calm them down. You can tell. Everybody's playing a little tense, a little tentative in white. And and, and Red, the Homestead's just, they're coming up and down the floor. They're playing their game. Yeah. But what they do, the Redbirds just need to get back to doing what they do. And, uh, and, and you know, give Homestead credit. I mean, 33-point lead now. Yeah. And we'd just like to give a quick shout-out to the season-long sponsors for the Pure Boys and Girls Basketball, Exhaust Pros, Green Bay Family Dentistry, Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, Baker Clinic, Nicolay Bank, Newman's Electric, Raystone Hill House, Harmon Studio, Chicago Street Pub, Pella Windows and Doors of Wisconsin, Cotter Funeral Home, and Gallagher's Pizza is the official YouTube streaming sponsor of Pure Boys and Girls Basketball, and Mako's Floor Covering Center is the official transportation sponsor of the Pure Girls and Boys Basketball. Will kind of uses that length as he goes glass. It's not a hard game, Mark. If you get a set for Will Hornseth <laughs> on the inside, the good things are going to happen. It usually works. Yeah. I've been around Coach Winchester a long time. <laughs> Will's got seven as the birds fall back to within one. Oh, and they're going to get Zach on a little hold down low. As both him and Franks are talking about it. And at Zach's first, as Willingham is going to check out and Hutchins is going to come back in. As is Hinner Stocker. He'll send Bleisner to the bench. Rotation. By the senior guard. Yeah, defense a little late on that rotation coming back help side as Wright goes baseline over Rowan. 38 35 Highlanders.
Clear out here for Hornseth on the left side. Oh, a pretty clean strip as O'Hagan. Yes, he got Will on the arm. Yeah. Oh, maybe he got no, him on the block. No, they're calling the, the body on Franks okay. there. Oh. Yeah. It was good good rotation by okay. O'Hagan. Uh, they're saying Franks bumped him enough got to it. get him off balance there. Number five picks up the foul. As Bleisner checks back in for Andrew Hintersocker. I get a little offense, defense early already. <laughs> Ooh. Kamowski got off balance and <laughs> got himself in trouble, but able to complete the pass yep. across the court to Kinzinger. Homestead doing a nice job defending that high ball screen against Kinzinger right now. Oh, Isaiah Wright all over the junior guard for the Redbirds. They're going to get a block by yep. Bleisner as he gets in front of Kinzinger going baseline. His first. His first. Team third. Will slipping baseline, getting by Bleisner as he goes with an up and under. He's got nine. The bird's down one. 12 25 to play here in the ballgame. That's such an effective move for Hornseth where he can spin to that left and go reverse. His long length mm -hmm. can really cover a lot of ground, make it almost impossible to defend. Ooh, Rowan got away with a little push there. On right as he was making his way into the lane. His light's going to settle some things down here at the top of the circle. And I got to imagine Homestead's pretty happy if you said that their big two have 20 of the 38 points, and they've got a one-point lead yeah. at this point in the game. Franks gets a little contact into Gregory, and that thing rattles around halfway down. Good yeah. look by Franks. The Redbirds got away with one there. What a great move, mm -hmm. and, and that thing couldn't have gone much further into the basket. Birds with a chance to take the lead here in this possession. We'll look inside to Hornseth here. Gregory triple top of the key. Front rim no good. It's polite clears the glass and get that up to Franks. Quickly triple corner. Hinterstocker. Gregory, uh, check that. Bleisner. Gregory goes up high for the rebound. Again, they will not be bashful from three. Zach launches a long triple. That one's going to be strong on the front rim. Back of the rim battle for the rebound as Hutchins comes away with that one. And also, you got a 6 9 guy flying around keeping balls alive in the middle if you're the Redbirds. Good play there by Hornsett to keep that one alive and give the Redbirds a second chance. Yeah, Hornsett just a step quicker here. Oh. Oh, nice. what a tough move by the Whoop. senior big man, Will Hornsett. Nice little shimmy back to the right, and he came left. Back over his left shoulder with the jump hook, and he got Bleiser to commit. And that's his second. Will's in double figures at 11. As Rogers and Wensler come in. Tommy O'Hagan's going to grab a seat, as is Bleisner. Watch that little shimmy shake, fake over yeah. the right, turn back, draws the contact and good. the finish. Good look. A great move by Hornseth. And then it'll take a little bit of air out of Homestead's mojo right now as Will converts a three-point play. And going to head to the bench for what I'm sure will be a quick breather. Yep. Your coach, Winchester. As Willingans checks in. Light heads back to the point for Homestead.
Lenzer gets down the lane. Gregory with the denial. He really wound up on that one. <laughs> the Redbird parent section in full throat right here in front of us. That ball's tipped out of bounds as Rogers got his hands on that one as Zach was looking to feed Hutchins in the corner. And Kinsger really looking to hunt his shot, but Homestead locking him up right yep. now. He's got no points here in the second half. They've done a good job of bottling him up for sure. Oof, Blake getting those long arms out top. And that's kind of what I mean. It's a little tentative. I mean, yep. those are two good shooters that just passed up open threes for the Redbirds. Zach, let's go a triple. Got it! Man, like, great. Yep, right in front of the such, <laughs> Like, he's so high IQ yeah. basketball player, right? I mean, that's a great screen by Domovsky getting Kinzinger space to knock down that triple. Oh. Yep, Rowan got a little body as Rodgers was moving baseline. But, yeah, to your point, he's just he's a smart kid setting kids up, right, and, and knowing where your shooters are. As Wicker's going to come in and give Rowan a little break. You know, the thing is, Kale, with Zach, right, he's playing double duty. He's running the point and... You know, from an offensive standpoint, he's had to go and run around and chase around Franks all game. So, triple in the corner. That ball is no good as Willingans grabs that miss by Rogers. Zach will walk it up as he gets a high ball screen from Ben. Long triple. Oof. Roof would have came off the place if he drills that one. As Hinterstocker grabs that rebound. Nice strip by Hutchins as he gets his hands on a ball that Franks had. I don't think Frank's expected no. him to be there. <laughs> Hutchins just, <laughs> just attacked. Lauren Seth going to make his way back to the scores table after a well-earned breather. <clears throat> Willingham's trying to navigate his way down. Misses a little reverse with the right hand. As Jonah Wensler gets that thing, quick corner on the reversal of Franks. Ooh, nice little Euro step Ooh. as he goes glass. That was a tough move. Yep. Brings we Franks got, up to 15 on the night. We got a timeout by the Highlanders as we will hear from our official YouTube streaming sponsor, Gallagher's. Check that. We're not going to play ads. So Kale and I will talk a little bit more then. So as you <laughs> we're back. <laughs> we're back. Um, so as you mentioned, right, with Franks kind of holding him to 15. Um, and he's had to work for his offense. You know, he really hasn't had a ton of good looks. So kind of heading down the stretch here, what do you see offensively with the pier? Um, you know, to kind of nurture this three-point lead maybe into something bigger. Well, they just got to go play, right? They can't just look to four to make every play. They, they, they've got... And they're so deep, right? Yeah. So, yeah, Zach's been a little slow it, to get going in this second half. Uh, but but Hornseth has really carried the team. And somebody else has, to, has just got to make a shot, right? They see one go through the net, yep. and, and that goal gets a little bigger and a little bigger. And we know of the talent that this Redbird team has. It, it's it's tense though, right? I yeah. mean, oh, like, yeah, for they sure. They haven't really been in this position mm -hmm. yet this year, other than maybe the Wisconsin Lutheran game. Yep. Uh, where, where they were down for the majority of it. And DePierre was the one that battled back, got the lead. But then, you know, the, the horses of Wisconsin Lutheran kind of took over yep. and, and made that what ended to be a three-point game was, or two-point game, whatever it was. It was really like five. So, um, you know, DePierre's just got to play. Yep. Yeah, I would love to see get Hornset to touch on, on the inside, though. Oh, we got Connor just standing there. Ooh. Birds will reset here in the half court. Rowan gets a high ball screen from Will. Hutchins triple. Got it. Yep. 
There's the guy we're talking about. He's up to six. Birds by six. Seven minutes to play here in the ball game. He missed his first one, but hit his next two threes. Good folks, he shoots it at almost 60% from three-point land. Gives you another weapon out there. And Franks is back at the scores table. I, I don't think you can keep him out much longer right. if you're Homestead. He's probably got to go the rest of the way. Yep. Nice, nice back, back cut. Door. As O'Hagan went up glass and he hit the ground hard. Took something in the forehead. Not exactly sure if he landed on maybe Ben's foot. He seems to be all right. Yeah. This Franks checks back in. As does Gregory sending Hutchins to the bench. As Wenzel's going to come in for O'Hagan, he's maybe going to get checked out here after that fall. And I think if they stop the game, I think you got to come out. Okay. And he's going to take a look at him. Rowan, pull up, got it from 15, right elbow. Yeah, you can tell they're just playing more free those yeah. last two possessions. Something you don't see from Rowan a whole lot, right? That mid-range game, it's usually, hey, let's get something from three or let's attack the rim. So certainly good look for the junior. Well, he's got it. Yeah. He's got the game to do it, but he, he knows he doesn't have to score, right? He's got to play solid defense handle the ball, take mm -hmm. the opportunities. He attacks the rim really, really well from, from the point guard position and for his yeah. size. Polite with a little shuffle and he's going to call for the travel. As Ben was lurking, as O'Hagan's going to check back in for Bleisner. We are at six even on the clock. DePier 48, Homestead 42. Zach, high ball screen from Ben. Zach gets that ball stripped from him, but is able to recover as Rowan gets a high ball screen. Looking for a cutter. It appears a little stagnant right yep, now. Yep, standing around a little bit. Probably a good move here to get Gregory on a ball screen and see if he can slip to an open spot. He's going to reject that. Hornstep going to clear out here and try and go against Franks. Oh boy, yeah, that was a late. That's a late call, but that is the right call. As Wright comes across Zach's body. Yeah, and you could see the we had a, we had a great vantage sure. point from it. Yep. You could see the contact, um, and I think the official was going to let him play if Zach maintains the ball. Which right. the officials have been great tonight, yeah. Mark. They, yeah, they've they've really haven't even noticed that they're mm -hmm. out there. That is Wright's first foul, team fifth. He's done an unbelievable job on Kinzinger. Yes. As Ben gets stripped, as he tries slipping down the lane, probably a little bit quicker on that shot opportunity as Ben gets tied up, and then he commits a foul. Willingans with his first. As we've got Rodgers and Hintersocker back in the game for the Highlanders. And Coach Kreider's doing everything he can just to try and keep his guys fresh. Mm -hmm. I, I like it. Just under five to play. Birds with six-point lead. Now, Frank's nice little spin, and he goes straight in front rim, back rim. He's up to 17 as Rogers apparently took maybe an elbow to the back of the head, maybe off of the screen. I didn't see that, Kale, but... No, I... I was watching Franks, a, a beautiful move, gets that yep. center of the court and spins back. His right checks in for Rodgers.
Birds up four, 4.30 to play. Will kind of force maybe a little bit of a baseline opportunity there. Good defense by Franks, yep. walled him up. Franks goes glass with the left hand. Sweet action, he's up to 19, cuts that lead to two. 48-46 as we're closing in on four minutes to play here. And we got a timeout by DePierre. It's going to be a full timeout. Uh, that's a tough move by Frank yep. coming back, coming back to his left hand and finishing through the contact. And welcome back to Sheboygan South High School as the Redbirds clinging to a two-point lead here, 48-46. It's been a pretty entertaining ball game. Low foul count, which has been really nice from a player perspective as they've gotten into a little bit of a rhythm here up and down. Yeah, and it appears, you know, they when they're playing really efficient, that ball's snapping from side yeah. to side. It's been a little slow on the rotational movements. I think what he'd really like is to get Will kind of down in that block and a half area with the ball so he can just get a quick little jump hook. Yeah, he's, he's catching a little bit further yep. than you want him to right now. He's even right there, right? I mean, he gets a little penetration, mm -hmm. but then it's blocked off, and he's still eight feet from the basket. <laughs> Rowan passed up that opportunity. Let's see if we can get Price hot here and nail a triple. He's been scoreless here in the second half. And the Pierce sends Hutchins into the scores table. I thought they might stick with that lineup after he hit the three. Yeah. So he just gives them the ability to really stretch the court, right? You saw mm -hmm. the penetration to kick out to Roan. Mm -hmm. That's a good shot for him, but Connor's in there. I mean, that thing's going up yep. and likely going in, shooting it at 60%. Right. We are under three right now. As Rowan went down the lane, he got stripped by Polite, knocks that ball out of bounds. Birds are going to keep it underneath their own basket. As Connor Hutchins checks in for Willingans. That was kind of one of those plays, Mark, where you're like, I don't know, maybe a foul. You know, I thought the ball was probably out on Rowan, but you probably could have called a foul. Yeah. So they don't, they, they just say, hey, Redbirds are going to keep the possession, no foul. Smart play by Rowan to let that one bounce into the backcourt. And they have done a good job on Zach, limiting him to three here in the second half. And Isaiah Wright <laughs> just doing a fantastic job on defense. Yeah. You know, I thought, he, I thought he went with two hands as Zach got to his right, but he yep. got him off so quick, like he didn't give the official time to make the call. Yep. <laughs> Coach Crater's a little hot on the bench. I think he was looking for... Maybe a little push off or definitely a non call. Another two and a half to play here in the ballgame. Birds with the razor thin two point lead. Oh, there they had the look they got. Will was that block and a half and they missed him. Ooh, Miss Gregory on a slip. Couple of good looks there. Hutchins, triple, top of the key. Back rim, no good. That ball's going to roll out of bounds. Good look for Connor. And that thing goes down more often than not as Rogers and Andrew Hinterstocker check in. And we've got the timeout by Homestead. I believe it's going to be a full 
I think that's all they've got left right now. Nope, 30. 30 second timeout. So here we are, Kale. Two point ball game for the Birds. What do you think uh, Coach Kreider is telling the troops as they huddle up? Well, what I love, I mean, if you look over here, it, what I love is, is he's kind of he's kind of going in there. It's more conversational right now. I mean, Inner Soccer's in there talking, talking, talking about what they want to do, kind of the action they want to get into, and um, you know, you get the kids to buy in that way, right? Yeah. Like, hey, what are you, what are you seeing? You're out there. Um, I think they're going to come out, and, and I think you got to get some type of action uh, where you get the ball into Frank's hand. If I'm the Redbirds here, though, what I love is they are probably going to come out in some type of set or they've talked about something. Go trap the first pass or mm -hmm. come out and show a zone for even if it's just for a pass or two. Uh, just throws off what what you probably right. have set up here if you're homestead. Yep. And there's the action trying to get Franks right. on the curl. Zach Dragon around him. Nifty move by Polite as he goes glass with the left hand. And we're going to have a timeout by Homestead. We're all tied up here. Yeah. 126 Back to, the to play. Defense substitution. Yep. And, Mark, we talked about it a little earlier and it just kind of hit me, but you mentioned Kinzinger's been on Franks all game, right? And, and I think it's starting to take its toll. You're not seeing him get to the spots that he normally does offensively. Right. And when you got to go against another Division One recruit on the you know on the defensive end, you're exerting a lot of energy, and the emotions are high, right? This is a sectional semifinal game, and in De Pierre's quest to try and get back to state, Homestead's quest to try and knock off the team that's kept them uh, out of the postseason the last couple of years. Yep. So, uh, I yeah. think that's been a factor here, and part of the reason Kinsinger only has three points. Yeah. Now Isaiah Wright's been fantastic defensively yep. too. I'm not taking anything away from him. But that's not the game that we've seen all season from the junior. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. And like you said, last year, right, you had John, you know, taking that offensive stress off of Zach, where Zach could just be like, I'm going to be the defender. He could be that lockdown yep, I defender. I could be that lockdown defender. And he's had to certainly take on a lot more of the scoring burden. And um, like you mentioned, maybe a little bit tired. We'll see what, what they draw up here out of the timeout. Uh, 40, yeah, 126. Again, the play all tied up here at 48. It's going to be right, polite, Franks, Wensler. And O'Hagan on yeah. the floor for Homestead. And Gamowski, Gregory, Hutchins, Kinzinger, and Hornseth. The five as we're closing in on a minute to play here. I believe Homestead only has one timeout. I'd be surprised if we see DePierre take one here. Yep. Yep. Kind of messed that set up as Coach Winchester was forced to take a timeout. You can almost feel the nerves from, from yeah. DePierre right now. It kind of in the air. Uh, and he's been tentative. Yeah. And like you said, I think Homestead, they just defensively, they've been amped up here this whole second half. Um, you know, again, from a... Uh, from a point perspective, they've held the period 18 points here in the second half. Certainly not something that they're accustomed to. Like you mentioned, they're operating at a high efficiency level scoring, and Homestead's just done a great job of taking away their options. They've made life tough for Will down low, and Zach, like you said, he's just he's running on fumes right now, and hopefully he's got a little bit left in the gas tank here to get him through it. I'd love to see the Redbirds come out in some kind of set where Kinzinger's got the ball. I'd like to see Domovsky come up and set a high ball screen. Keep Hornseth in that short corner area so if the help comes, you got to dump off. And yep. then you space the floor with Gregory and, and Hutchins, Hutchins in yep. the corners so that Kinzinger can really, he's got the ability. He's, he's got that knockdown, that 17-foot uh, knockdown jump shot. He's got the dump off down to Hornseth, or he's got shooters in the corner. And Domovsky's yep. such a smart player. You know, he can come up, set that screen. He, he creates a lot yep. of space considering... He's, what do they got him listed at? Six foot? That's yeah. probably generous. Yep. Here we go. 59.7 on the game clock. We are squared up at 48. 
between Gregory Hutchins, Domofsky, Hornseth, and Kinziger on the floor. Franks, Polite, O'Hagan. Who else we got on there? Wensler and... This is great, though. One minute left in a tie ball Rogers. game. Yeah. Right? This is great. Now, yeah, this might be the pre-action before what they want to get into. The pier might be looking to settle for one shot. They still have a timeout left? They do. I think Homestead's got one as well. We are under 30. Domofsky, both feet in the self logo. Now at this point, you got you to keep running somebody to the middle of the floor when yep. they're up here pressuring. And right now, nobody's there. We are down ten to seconds. 10. Zach with the ball, left side, right in front of the scorer's table. So you get loose. Hutchins, triple. Back rim, no good. Rebound. Ooh, and we are going to have a foul tipped out of bounds. Man, oh, man, that could have easily, that could have been a foul. Oh, the officials are going to. Well, they, if they call a foul, they're in the They're, they're in, the, in bonus. the bonus. And the, the baseline official did raise his hand yep. with a foul call. He had this. So we might have zeros on the clock with free throws. Oh. Okay, so they're no foul. Hey, hang on. Okay. No foul, so we got a point five on the clock. The Piers ball. Oh, I thought they called a foul. All right. That, Actually, I don't want to see the game end that way. <laughs> Very well. I mean, it, it certainly could have been, but yeah, the way. But that that's been that's been mm -hmm. how this game's this whole game's been played. To call that now, I just don't yeah. think it's. I don't think it's the right call. It's probably a little tic tac for for how sure. uh, the yep. physicality that this game's had. Yep. I mean, I think I think you certainly could have, but you know they hadn't called it all game. And Homestead's going to call their last timeout. So, Kale, right, for the pier. I, huh? I don't know if I love calling the timeout if you're Homestead. Now you've allowed you've allowed the pier to drop a to play. To drop something else, yeah. Now they had on that initial look, they had a 1-4, you know, flat. Normally what we'd be seeing guys kind of running, then we get a screen and a slip. Just wondering if we may see some of that action here. But boy, Hutchins had a good look on that triple and just back rim that thing. It was a great closeout, though. I mean, yeah. you know, he, he's already a little rushed because of, of the time, right? You, and you always have more time than it feels like. Yep. But you're you're wanting to make sure you get it off. And, and a great closeout contest, shot contest by Homestead. And, you know, you're the Redbirds. You're just trying to get Will, like, a half a step so he can elevate. Something high, you know, he's going to... He's going to tip, right? I mean, I guess you could catch and shoot. They say you need .3. You've got yeah. .5 on the clock. But I would be surprised if they don't, you know, lob something up at the rim and just try and get a... Yep, so we got that a same... Quick, a quick tip, and they yep. probably run guys across, create some distraction, and just throw it up to the middle. Oh! Tip shot by Will comes off the front rim. And ladies and gentlemen, we are going to overtime. Pretty good look. Lob was maybe a little bit short for his liking, but he was able to get his hands on that thing and at least an opportunity as we're going to head to overtime. We're going to put four on the clock here. 48-48. I didn't think it'd be a sub-50 game. No. In regulation. I was thinking a sub-70, but yeah, yeah not a, not a sub-50. Well, this is what March is all about, whether you're following the collegiate level or the high school level. It does not get any better than this when you got two teams, two high-level teams going toe-to-toe -to -toe in the sectional semifinal. And whoever walks out of here with this one, they're going to get the winner of Arrowhead and Germantown as they're coming out of the bottom half of that sectional. Homestead has got to feel good about where they are at. I mean, their defense has been 
really spectacular here in the second half. Last update I had, Arrowhead was up 10 at half, 33-23 against that Germantown team on the okay. other side of the sectional. It was a terrible toss. <laughs> the first one was bad too. It was like I mean, we I had a great, we're right at half court. I mean, it was definitely fell <laughs> off to the to On top the of Will's head. left. Yeah. yeah. As Rowan's pass gets picked by Wright, who's looking for Zach on the back cut and just threw it a little shallow on that. As Franks is going to set up shop right in front of the Homestead bench. Good straight up defense by Ben. Ooh, oh God, we had a couple of travel. travels there as Franks misses the. <laughs> and the ball hit the top of the backboard. My guess is we're going to probably have a jump ball because they may not be able to establish possession. Yep. Yeah. So that one's going to stay here with Homestead. But that, you know, that that's the physicality, right? I mean, Franks went, yeah. took a lot of contact, but they've yeah. been letting him play like that all game. Yeah. And it's just kind of the new way, right, where guys are playing defense. You could be moving, but if you're straight up and you're not, you know, yeah, you're not coming down, yeah. right? Yeah. The hands are the hands are yeah. up. The body's in good position. Guys are so strong sure. at this level now, too. It's like, mm -hmm. you know, that's just a good physical play. Yeah. That's like 160 pounds at this age, right. soaking wet. <laughs> Hornstaff looks like he's about 230. Right. There. Next fall committed by Homestead will put the Redbirds in the bonus. The Birds have a couple before they get to that spot. Good back Ooh. cut. Good hands by Hornstaff. He yep. saved an easy layup yep. there. Getting a deflection. As Ben got caught yeah, with his back to, to the ball. 2.47 to play. Same score, 48-48. Student section coming over, trying to rile up the DePere parents here. It brings them to their feet. Throwing on a good dig on Franks. As okay. Polite goes up and gets that one tipped out of bounds. Okay. I'll tell you, if they had uh, the college replay, I think that one might get overturned. That one might be, under, might be reviewed. Baseline. Good job by Will cutting that off. Frank's getting loose down the middle. He goes glass. Wow. Good. What a tough left-handed finish by Franks. He's up to 21. Highlanders by two. Just under two to play here in the ball game. As Zach gets tripped up and he's going to slip on the floor. We're going to have a jump ball as the birds are going to maintain possession underneath their own basket. As Offense, Wright, defense sucks. Yeah, Wright and Wensler in for <laughs> Hinterstocker and Rogers. Oh, ball tipped out of bounds. First, I thought Rowan threw it off the backboard. Yeah. But, but, Wensler, that's, but that's the kind of like, stuff I'm saying. They just look nervous. Yeah. The period doesn't look natural. Mm hmm. Clock adjustment needed there as we're going to play on 150. Zach triple top of the key. Back rim no good, and that one's going to go high. Highlanders pull down Oiz O'Hagan, comes out with the rebound, quick push here front court. 
Yeah, it looked like he might have picked up his pivot foot. Is Polite's going to call a timeout? Yeah, we're at one got away with one. Yeah. Right? We're at 137 to play here in Homestead with a two point lead, 50 to 48. As it is a full timeout. Just final in the Division II sectional. Fellow FRCC foe Eshwabanon with a 20 point victory, 72 52. They'll move on to play Saturday with a trip to state on the line. And they are going to be a tough out in the Division II. They've got senior group, senior group, and, and uh, a couple of high level shooters. You see the pivot feet, uh, that late step. Yeah. And right in front of the official, too. Yep. But. Full, full recount here. Homestead with 16 falls. DePierre with four. So DePierre probably get a little active here on defense. Maybe looking to turn them over. DePierre just hasn't found Hornseth in good spots late in the game with the ball. Yeah. Everything's been, been too far away yep. from the basket. Yeah, the you know, we talked about yeah. we talked about Kinzinger guarding Franks, but but Franks has been guarding Hornsef. Like, mm -hmm. give him credit, right? Yeah, he's he's drawn him many times for sure. So Hagen's going to trigger it opposite the Homestead bench. They go Hinterstocker in front of Gregory. Oh, from behind. Boy, rolling with a pretty, pretty good look, but they're giving him a push. That's going to be their fifth. That's Rowan's fourth team foul. 120 to play here. I thought the back official called it, which I, I thought he yeah. was like, that's, yeah. he's way out of position to make that call. I, it, was the, it was the official in front. Homestead up two. Ooh, that ball's turned over as O'Hagan cannot handle it. And Willigans comes away with it. Birds are going to have a chance here to tie the ball game as they are going to get a timeout with 112 to play as the Pierce is going to call a full timeout. It's going to get Hutchins back in the game. Guessing he may be coming in for Ben. Yep. Yeah, and a great play by Willigans there to uh, create this, the turnover. Yeah. Boy, just when you thought like things were kind of settled and you were maybe thinking, okay, Homestead's going to maybe burn a little more time off the clock, right? Get another foul. And you kind of force that action a little bit. I mean, I know you have to take opportunities when you get them, but um, maybe a little but, early, you but, know? But that was that was like, you know, kind of how it appeared yeah. to look late in the game, right? Just the, It was a nervous play. It wasn't yeah. just the flow of the game. Yep. It was not It was not planned to, to play. It was planned to not make a mistake, and that's a dangerous yep. spot to be in. Yep. Like shooting not to miss instead of shooting to make. Yep. The birds will be taking that thing out opposite the pier bench. Well, this has been highly exciting in a game early that looked like the pier was going to run away with it. We have a one possession game late in overtime, Martin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 112 on the clock, birds down two, 50 to 48. My ball screen by Will. Zach, little off balance. Fade wow, gets the wall. One minute to play. We are all squared at 50. Zach kind of lost his way down the lane. I'm just glad that and he was able just, to recover and make something out of, of it. Yeah. I don't know what you do if you're Homestead. You, you can't really guard that any better. Right. But Gensinger, and I, I don't know the exact time that he was held scoreless there, but it, it was a long Ooh, drought yeah. for the junior. Homestead looking content to maybe take the last shot here. Ooh, Will almost got his long arms on that one. 
We're closing on 20 to play here in the ball game. Tied up at 50. Play. Pretty good matchup there. Nice back cut. As he gets Renzo to go glass. We're at 13. Zach with the ball. Quick push front court. Gregory taking a peek. Little step back double. He gets knocked out of the way. And the Highlanders are going to come away with it as O'Hagan comes out with the rebound. Five and a half seconds to play. As Homestead has got a two point lead. Beautiful back cut by Wensler as he got free. As Domofsky is going to pick up his fifth foul. As Williams and Dorchester are checking in for Domofsky, who just fouled out, and Hutchins is going to check out as well. Yeah, it looked like Gregory was there in position to contest the shot. I mean, yep. it was a millisecond too late. Mm -hmm. it, I thought he was going to put it off the backboard, and instead, uh, Homestead gets it, gets the lead. That's a, oh, that's a travel. That's a travel, yeah. Yep. Yep. That's polite. Tried to hang on to that thing on the full court pass. And he had to slow himself down. Unfortunately, he took a couple of little baby steps. And they had it. <laughs> they they just they threw it a half second late. Yeah. It was there. It was there, yeah. And the inbounder just hesitated enough to get polite too deep where he had to take the extra step. Yep. So we've got turnover, Homestead, 4.3. They've got the lead by two, and the Birds are going to have to go the full length of the court here. And I've seen it in 4.6. 4.3 okay. is a little, you know, that's right there at the, right there at kind of the magic number. And yeah. De Pierre's got it real late, real deep in the corner. As you see the replay, I mean, he's kind of on the edge. You can't yeah. tell, but you, know, you could tell he just caught that ball in, in a really bad spot. Yeah. But, but De Pierre's going to be deep in their own corner, Mark. They can't move, right? They can't run the baseline. Right. So what, uh, you know, what are you looking to draw up here? Something into the middle of the floor with a guy streaking and a quick, a yeah. quick touch pass. It's got to be something on a curl, right? You can't have them coming to the ball. It's got to be something around the corner. And then you've got to work something where you get maybe a down screen, up screen. Remember, you only need two, so a three is nice to get. And I know we don't have a ton of time to talk about, but they've got to get that first action up the floor with a dribble and but, really look to attack. But if you can get a long pass yeah, that over too. half sure. court to Hornseth, right, and he can either tip or catch, turn, and fire to to somebody streaking, right. you know, you, you got a shot here. What do you do if you're homestead? Just it's man, full court, man to man, switching everything. I I would think so. I mean, again, you've got to keep everybody in front of you. And what I would do, obviously, if they're defending the ball in the backcourt, you got to make them go left and right. You can't have them let that that straight yeah, just keep run keep everything out. Yeah. in front. Keep everything keep, in front. Get right? them to turn once, right? And no and, fouls. Yeah, no fouls for them. I mean, how big was that half court shot at the end of the first oh, half for geez. Homestead? Gregory is going to trigger it. That's the look we want from Zach. Oh, and we're going to get a foul as Polite trips. Zach. Zach lost control of the ball. Bonus throws. <laughs> I don't know. What did you see out there, kid? I mean, right? So Man, I, it's, <laughs> it's a lot, right? Okay. Um, intense yeah uh, this is gonna I be don't a, know this I, is gonna be a bonus there was contact yeah but man one and one they say ball don't lie so let's find out first one's good one second on the clock birds down one Both. We are knotted up, 52 apiece. Oh, geez. Half court shot for the win. How do you feel about double overtime, Woo! Mark? Well, I'm telling you, man, that is deflating for Homestead. They've played this hard for this long. I thought, I thought, I thought they had it won. Yeah, I mean, basically, you're you're a controlled pass away from you know from moving on going to the, the free throw finals. line. Yeah, going to the free throw line. Got to get one. Huge turn of events. Wow. Zach knocking down a couple of pressure free throws to knock this thing up at 52 as we are heading to double overtime. That puts Zach up to 24, game high 24 to lead the birds. As the, as the pier 
Still with a little bit in the tank, man. We thought they were out. Been super passive. Fifty-two, fifty-two. So that's a four-point, a four-point uh, overtime. Eight total points. Eight total four, points. Four yep. for each. Yep. Just as we expected. Absolutely. <laughs> Two teams that average well into the seventies <laughs> on the 70, season. Seventy-six. In a defensive battle. Yep. Love it. Well, let's see where this jump ball goes. Looks like we got a different guy on the. On the can toss. He throw it straight. <laughs> <laughs> Kale, come on. He's you a little biased. Okay. He's a little biased right. to his left. Here we go. <laughs> Zach, good triple screen. wing. Front rim, no good. Ben keeps it alive. Rips it out of there. He's going to go glass. Oh, they are going to call. Got a hold. They're going to call a fight. Foul. Okay. That's his fourth. Okay. That's a yeah, that's a big foul on Polite. Yeah, the junior picks up Woo. number four there. Ben going to work down low, just yeah. ripping that thing away. Now he hits the line for a one and one. It's a really big rebound yeah. by the senior. And he knocks down that first one. It's good to see Williams making a big play down the stretch. He's really had a nice second half of the season coming on. A player that dealt with some injuries last year. Uh, mm -hmm. but was a big part of the run to the state championship. And yep. And the front runs. Yeah. Will collects the rebound off of the Williams miss and hammers that one in. Redbirds by three. And that ball's knocked away by Kinzinger. You could just sense the, the life that's back in the white jerseys. Will attacking that rebound and finishing it with style. Does Homestead have an answer? Franks, three, that ball is blocked as Williams comes away with the rebound. Kinziger, I got a piece of that one. So we're closing in on three minutes to play here in the ball game. Zach patrolling the middle of that offense as they're going to hang on to it here. I'm not sure why he's got a five count working when, oh boy, Zach gets whacked across the faces. Wright got a little bit aggressive on that. Probably a lot of ball, but. Tony. I don't hate it though. Yeah. You know, you're going, you're going for the steal. It's. It's not a, that wasn't a malicious play. No. Like, yeah, he got him in the face, but yeah. he wasn't, you know, he's going after the ball. He try and make a play. If he gets the steal there, he's got breakaway layup. Right. And you're probably at some point going to send him to the line anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're right. way better off to make that play going for a steal. Right now, absolutely. Now, you'd probably not like to follow one of the best free throw shooters on the team. Zach knocking down three free throws here in the last couple of minutes. And he back rims that one no good as Ben's going to pick up a foul going over the back. Uh, no sooner do I say something about the 90% free throw mm -hmm. shooter than, than he misses one. The, the old announcer's curse. On purpose, I was just biting my tongue. I did not <laughs> want to say that. So <laughs> as Ben picks up his second and Polite's going to have the line for a couple. You know, Mark, my, my, my coach in college would say every year, every preseason, he'd, he'd say something like, I want you to remember October 3rd at 2 p.m., a game this year will be won or lost on free throw blockouts. There you go. And, uh, and it's true. It's, it's, it's like special teams in football, yeah. right? Yeah. You don't spend a lot of time working on it, nope. but it is really pivotal in, sure. in momentum swinging play in the game. Light is good on the first, and back rim and down on the second. He's at 11, 56-54 to Pierre, 240 to play in the ball game. A couple of quick shout-outs. Nicole Hoffman is watching the game from her house in to Pierre. And Dan Van Stratton, our public address announcer. 
He promised me if I mentioned his name that he would no longer play 70s music at the games next year. So <laughs> we'll see if he holds up to that. Closing on two minutes to play here. Birds by two. And we are under two minutes to play. Again, to pure content with hanging on to it here in the half court. Need to get a little bit more action on that as we get a handoff over to Zach. Man, that is a wide five-second call that they are calling on Zach. He probably had six, seven feet between him and the defender. Well, maybe that's changed a little bit. As Will draws a foul, as Franks is going to pick up his second. And Hornseth is going to head to the line here for two. A little bit strong on that one. Hinterstocker checks in for the Highlanders. 135 to play, to appear by two. And to appear by three. 57 54, Will's up to 15. Wasn't the most convincing free throw I've ever seen, but <laughs> enough to roll it over the front of the rim. That was a fortunate switch as Will was able to use his length to keep Franks at bay. Nice up and under by Polite as he got Will up in the air. Seagulls glass, plates up to 13, cutting that lead to 1, 57-56. We're under a minute to play here in the ballgame. Double overtime special from Sheboygan South. trying to get Polite off the ball with those four fouls. And there you got a little rip around reach on O'Hagan. That'll be two now. It appears in the double bonus. It's three on O'Hagan. 40 seconds on the clock. Birds by one. Zach up to a game-high 26. And the junior has been money from the line and giving the Birds a three-point lead. Zach up to 27. 35 seconds to play here in double overtime. Neither team will go away, Mark. No, this has been great. Oh, Ooh. nice little step through by Rogers. The freshman. Good finish by the 5'9 freshman with the right hand. Man, he was running. He was almost on the ground when he let that thing go as Homestead calls a quick timeout. Birds by one, 13.8 to play here in double overtime. Well, and that's, it's such a tough move because when you're undersized like that and you get those weird release points or even, you know, he's kind of like running and just yeah. puts it up there. Uh, really tough to defend. Yep. Love the attack. And that's, and that's just it, right? You don't have to get three. This, there's still 14 seconds. Sure. There's a lot of time left in this game. I think you try and get a try and get a trap or something here in the backcourt and then take a foul once it gets over the mid midline. Yeah, I mean again they don't have a ton of time, right? Because you can't let them dribble around too much. But my guess is, you know, get some action in here, make sure Zach gets his hands on the ball. Yeah, um, and, make I, and if I'm hoping I really like double. pushing up sure. here. And, and yep. kind of like we saw at the end of, I don't even remember what that the game where yeah. they made the long pass, right? So make the pier throw, throw something long because it's just awkward. Yeah. 
So it'll be interesting, like you mentioned, what the pier draws up here out of timeout if they do play it maybe a little bit closer to the vest, right? If they look to get it to Zach and, and uh, you know, let him take some contact at the line. Ben's going to throw it in down here. Again, 13.8 to play in double overtime. Birds by one. And there's your inbound pass going over to Zach. Oh, no. Yeah, turnover by Kinsley. Oh, oh he my missed God, it. he misses the layup. Ooh. Kale, uh, sorry, on that call, Wensler just complete air ball on the pick as that thing was going to go through the net with about three and a half to play, and there was not going to be any time left. No, that was, uh, that was... Wow. That was exactly what you want. Oh. If you're Homestead, you got Big the trap hope. like we talked about. You push everybody up. You hit the... Kensinger basically hit him in stride. Yeah. I think it all happened so fast. He just, like, wasn't ready for it. I mean, he's at the rim. Yep. And they got Zach to pick up the ball and make yeah. that kind of in-between right back to the middle. Oh, there was no one there. Ooh. As Hutchins goes 7.20 on that free throw and rolls out. Again, 2.2 on the clock. All right, Mark, what do you do here? Because I'm under, I would miss this on purpose. Yeah, you know. 2.2, .2, you're, yeah. you're not getting a two-point right. shot, right? Yeah. So you got to, if you miss it, you're making them rebound it, turn, and just get a heave up. There, it's going to be three points either way. If yeah. you make it, they get to take the ball out. Yeah. Clock doesn't start, and you get to throw it down the floor. So I'm the, it has to hit the rim, number one. Yep. But I, I'm under the, the thought that I put all four guys outside the, the, the three-point line. They're going to get the rebound, and they're going to get basically a three-quarter heave and, to, to try and win the game. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Like you said, it's right, it's that, that angle that's probably, like you mentioned, boxing out. It doesn't get... It doesn't get rehearsed in practice on how to miss intentionally. Yeah. So you're just thinking about, like, Connor, yeah, hey, if man. you miss yeah. the rim, right. then they get it then out. Then they get it out dead yeah. ball anyway. So, um, yeah, we'll just kind of see what's going on. But they leave both Will and Ben down to the rebound, maybe in case there is something that they can back tip. Um, boy, fingernail chewing time for sure right now. 2.2 on the clock. Redbirds, 59 <laughs> Homestead 58. We thought this thing was packed in about two minutes ago when Homestead stole the ball and just inexplicably a, just a air ball layup. I mean, it just may have slipped out of his hands, but man. There's a reason March is my favorite <laughs> one, and it's pretty much this. Yeah. So let's see what happens here. And that one did go in and out. And this is going to be ball game as they do not get a shot off uh, wow. as the DePue Redbirds move on to the sectional final with the double overtime victory over Homestead, 59-58 in a suspense-filled sectional semifinal. The Birds live to play another game as they will take on what we presume will be Arrowhead in a sectional final at Oshkosh North on Saturday afternoon. Zach with a game high 27 for the Redbirds. Will with 15. Tim Franks with a game high with a team high 21 for Homestead and Trevor Polite with 13 as the Highlanders emptied the gas tank here and gave the Redbirds all that they could handle times two as we went to double overtime and the birds were left for dead. Just an twice. unbelievable game. Wow. I, I'm glad I didn't really have any. I, I'm glad you filled the time there. I, I was trying to find <laughs> words to say, Mark, because that was. Oh, oh you just you got to feel terrible I, yeah. for for. You're yeah. excited for the period. You got to feel terrible for Homestead. Yep. I mean, they had chances oh. and couldn't put it away. Um, you know, if you think like the the pass, the offensive rebound. <laughs> And, and then the missed layup. Like, yeah. uh, it, I, I mean, Homestead did everything, everything. they needed they, to do. They were awesome tonight. Except on, like I said, one or two, right? I mean, the, the, the play that gave the pure life where Polite stepped out of bounds on the full court. And then the, then the steal here and the, the missed layup. Yeah, I mean, two court, times right? where yeah. DePure was done. Like, they were finished. But they just found a way 
And that's to pull it you, out. You, wow. You need a little luck to 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 make a run in in a single elimination yep. tournament. Yep. Um, you just need a little luck, and yep. I think if you're De Pere, you're thrilled <laughs> to get out of here tonight with a W. Absolutely, absolutely. So again, from Sheboygan South sectional semifinal, De Pere in a big time ball game, double overtime victory over Homestead, 59 to 58. We'd like to thank all of you that, that tuned in to watch tonight. Yeah. Over a 1,000 viewers here. Uh, yeah. Appreciate you, you tuning in, and you saw a heck of a game between two really good basketball teams. Yep, yep. So tonight from Sheboygan South, again, the Redbirds, 59-58 or Homestead for studio engineer Paul Roop, color analyst Cale Coleman. My name is Mark Mino. Thank you for tuning in, and we will see you at Oshkosh.